Hello world, so we're here to take a look at the Maker Advent Calendar, the 12 Days of Codemus. Uh, it comes in a uh, little nifty box, you know, it's not too big. Open it up and we have uh, 12 individual little boxes and you can follow along at the piehut.com forward slash advent. So I'm going to start with day one. So just opening a uh, box for day one and we'll see what's inside. And it looks like we've got a breadboard. I can see a breadboard, a uh, little USB cable. Uh, I didn't do any research on this. We've uh, just decided to get it and we're gonna share it with our classes. So uh, this is the Pico. It's got a little Pico in it. I can see the Pico. So let's get this out of the way and have a look. So in the first little packet, you can see we've got a breadboard and the cable. And I'm just going to get this open and we can have a look at the Pico, or Pico H. One hand, it isn't going to work. Give me a sec. We'll do some uh, camera trickery. So there it is, little Pico H. Pretty cool. So uh, we're probably going to head over to the website now and have a look. So this is the website, thepiehut.com, and just forward slash advent, select the, the advent calendar you've got, and you can see it's got clear instructions for each day right up to day 12. Uh, don't scroll down, there's a spoiler section. If you're like me and want to do it a day at a time, do not spoil it. So let's head over to day one, and it's uh, quite clear, and it tells you what's going to happen and what we're doing. Um, tells you what's in the box, gives you some images, really nicely laid out, quite clean, easy to follow. So you can see we've got the, the Pico H, the USB cable and the breadboard. Um, today's project is literally just getting the software set up for it and uh, it's really crystal clear how to follow along. So just follow the instructions um, on the pages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow along with this one and then in the next ones I'll just get straight to the point and show you what we're doing. It's got a nice little pin out diagram if you want to know what each of the pins on the uh, the Pico do. Okay, it uses many different programming languages but we're going to use MicroPython, okay, which is uh, pretty straightforward if you're, if you're studying Python at the moment. Okay, we're going to have to install uh, Thorny, uh, which allows us to program the Pico with MicroPython. So we need to download that, so you just need to click onto it and select whether you're on Windows, Mac or Linux. So I'm on 64-bit Windows. So I'm going to select the 64-bit installer, click install, click next, follow the instructions. Really straightforward, choose where you want to install it to and just keep clicking next, create a desktop icon if you want, click install and that's literally it it will install okay and then all we are going to do is while that installs we're going to go back and i'm going to scroll down to show you the step-by-step -step instructions that it wants you to follow it does give a little warning that some people have had issues with this part if you do get issues follow their their, their alternate way of doing things but to be perfectly honest um, i didn't have any issues setting this up um, so yeah, but if you do, they do give some, some advice and some frequently asked questions, which is good. So we've downloaded Thorny. So it says that what we have to do now is install MicroPython on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So to do that, it wants us to open Thorny, connect the settings um, and get, the, get Thorny connected to the Pico. So to do that, we need to get it, the Pico into the plug board. You can see quite clearly here. Gives you a nice little diagram of how that should go and pay attention to the letters on each side so as you can install it correctly. Um, you then, it's, you hold, once it's all plugged in, you've connected the cable, you hold down the reset button, you plug it into the computer with Thorny open and it should recognize it and everything should just work. Okay, we know that doesn't always happen. Um, so this is on an on a actual uh, a system I haven't installed it on or tested it before. So we can see straight away whether it's gonna be okay. 
So this bit's a bit tricky. You've got to be really gentle with this and it can be a little bit of a pain. So you need to line up, line up your pins and try and put equal pressure on both sides as so not to snap any of the pins. Take your time. Do not get angry, keep calm, keep it lemon. And there we go. Yeah, stay chilled, stay, stay calm. And it will go in and it should sit flush to the breadboard. Okay, so you can see there it is flush. Okay, and that is, that's perfect. That's what you want. If you lose your temper with it, you are gonna break it. So stay calm. Uh, so get your cable un, untwisted and get it ready to go. Plug it in to the Pico. See, it's me being a bit silly and getting the wrong way around. Oh, and the wrong way up. There we go. Happy days. Okay, and then we're going to plug the USB into the thing, but we're going to hold down that reset button as we do it. Hold it down. Get it plugged in. Plug it into USB. And release. And what you should see is that you can see that it pops up and it's fine. We then just have to configure the settings. So follow the settings. The settings are on the website. So it tells you exactly what you need. Um, the first time you do this, it might not have picked up the Raspberry Pi Pico H. If it doesn't, unplug your Pico, plug it back in, try again, and you should get the variant settings correct. If the variant settings aren't correct, it's because it hasn't recognized it properly. Uh, once you've done that, you can see that it is installing MicroPython, which is what we want. Amazing. We can close that now and we are good to go and follow along with the tutorial that is on day one. Oh, missed a step. Configuring the interpreter is really easy. Go up, configure it, and then what you want to do is you want to select, uh, what is it you want to select? Yeah, that one. MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, Pico, okay? Really important that you do that. If you missed that step, select the, the COM port it's on. Uh, so it, you should only hopefully have one if, unless you've got loads of stuff plugged into your computer. Uh, and then all you need to do is literally press OK. Once you've done that, it should all be golden. So once you've done that, we're going to start to uh, do a little bit of coding with the Pico and make sure everything's working the way we want it to with MicroPython. So what we'll do is if we go to View and we go to Files, we can see uh, our directories on the left-hand side. We can see the Raspberry Picos there as well underneath that, which is cool. And you can see you can drag it up and down um, in case you want to get 20 files or saved files is quite useful. So the, this first little um, sort of clip and the first day one project is to get you understanding how to connect your pins and how to do get some output working uh, with the Pico. So it's a really really quick intro to a little bit of MicroPython and so on. So we're going to test it by just typing a print um, command. I'm going to print I'm going to follow along with the tutorial that's on advent day one for this. Uh, open your brackets and type what it recommends. And it says, this is my Pico talking. Okay, remember to close your uh, speech mask, close your brackets, or your parentheses, sorry. And then uh, you can literally hit, should, should be able to hit run, which is the little green button at the top and it should absolutely work fine. And in the console at the bottom, you should be able to see, this is my Pico talking. And that means that MicroPython's on your Pico, that Thorny's talking to your Pico and everything is perfect. So we could try another print statement with opening parentheses, opening speech marks, and just creating another string. And that would be something like, I don't like pineapple on my pizza. Now, I actually love pineapple on pizza. Ham pineapple on pizza is amazing. Let me know what you think in the comments. Yeah, what's your favorite pizza topping? 
I do like a good seafood pizza. Prawns, oh, olives, you know, very Greek. Lovely. You can just press uh, the green button again for that and it runs fine. So now that's all great, but we want to make sure that we're actually getting something that uh, works with the Pico. We know the Pico is working, we know that Thorn is working, but there is a little LED on the Pico that we can actually control and uh, get working, get, get flashing. So that's what we're going to do now. So from machine, we're going to import pin. So this just lets us control all the pins on the Pico. Okay. And then what we're going to do is this line of code I will explain to you. So we're saying onboard LED. So we're creating a variable and we're saying it equals and we're saying what pin it is. So remember you can check back to that pin diagram and see what all the pins do. Okay, so it's pin 25 and we're saying comma pin out. So we're setting it as an output. Okay, and then new line. And again, onboard LED dot value. So we're saying we're gonna give it a value. And we're gonna do one for positive or true. Okay, so onboard value equals true, therefore onboard LED should be on. So once we've done that, we can uh, check our spelling. If you, it is really important that you you get you don't make errors when you type in your code. Um, I'm I'm dreadful for it. It's one of the things I do trip up on, and I get syntax errors, and I do have to correct myself even after the amount of years I've been sort of teaching it and playing about with code and all things like that. So uh, probably because of my dyslexia, but check everything. If you get a syntax error, it will mean you've made a mistake. So it's can't import name pin. You can see there, and if you can spot the error straight away, can you see it? I used a lowercase rather than uppercase. So again, run it again. I've got another one and I've got pin out isn't defined. So what do you think the issue is there? Again, typo. And you can see here, amazing. We've got our little green LED lit up on the Pico. What you can do is set it to zero and that will go out. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Come back and see what we do on day two um, because it does get more interesting as we go along and the videos will be quicker. Like, subscribe and share.